and welcome to Underpaid Gamers Podcast. My name is Justin. I'm sitting next to my friend and colleague, Tony. What's up? Uh, today we're going to be talking about a multitude of topics. Our main topic for today, uh, for discussion, is our recent experience with The Revenant, the movie. Slash Leo DiCaprio's real life. Yeah, apparently, yeah, that's real life. Uh, I hope it's not, but I definitely... It's the ancestor. This is what it was. Uh, on top of that, we're going to be talking about some new movies coming out, specifically the WoW movie and the potential for a Call of Duty movie, and maybe a little mention of Assassin's Creed. Uh, on top of that, some game releases coming out soon, Fire Emblem, uh, The Division, uh, so, and some other news of some topics that we've covered before on this podcast. So, uh, without further to do... Word! I put my finger... I did a finger gun, I did another finger gun, I put the thumbs together in the shape of a W, and I said, Word! Play the music! Tony! Yes? How's life, man? It's okay. I have... It's It's been cold recently. It has it's been. It's the middle of winter. Um, I have came down with a slight cold myself. Oh, no! Can you talk? I'm getting over it. I'm talking right now. But there might be a lot of sniffles. Not because I'm overly emotional in this episode. It's because... Well, no, this episode right means a lot to Tony. It's our 24th, correct? Ooh. I think so. Yeah. Um, and there's just something about 24 Ooh. that really resonates with Tony. And he's been crying since... I, he's not been crying. I'm making all this up. Let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. Exactly. And topic. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what, what do you got? What do you want to start with? Yeah, what do you want to start with? Um, we can start about esports for a second. Um, ESPN launched an esports sector, which is really nice. They've already put out a whole bunch of articles. Um, a couple about Smash, my favorite. They put a, an article out about Armada. Nice. The Gods of Melee. And TSM Zero, who is like the winningest person in Smash 4. So that's a nice article. Um, they did some CSGO stuff, League of Legends, blah, blah, blah. It's on their, if you go to their website, so like the top of their website, there's tabs, and it's like basketball, football, hockey, baseball. All the mainstream sports. Right. Mainstream The staples of ESPN. And then there's the more category, which includes bowling and golf and chess. And, and esports. esports! What up? However, esports is the number one of that section. So that's what's up. That is what's up. Uh, so that's real nice. It'd be fun to see if that makes it to the top bar. Ooh. If it starts competing ooh. with the big dogs. Auga! Anyway, uh, Stacy Share joins Activision.tv. No, Activision TV, not Duck TV. Uh, as we talked about before, Activision is trying to make an ESPN of esports yes. television channel. Making a, putting Disney up for their own money. Yep. Because Disney owns ESPN, as we talked before. Yes. Also, ESPN has like 24 channels. 24? They have a lot. Yeah. So why don't they just have an like ESPN channel? Or an esports channel? I think eventually we'll get to that point. I'm glad that this is happening. And that there's competition for it means that it's only going to innovate. And there's going to be competition. It's going to help us consumers. We're going to be like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. I like that better. Then ESPN's going to be like, oh, yeah, you like that? Check this out. Check this out. And we're going to be like, whoa, that's so sick. And then it's just going to go back and forth until we've got the coolest thing ever. Stacey Chair is a woman. Yes. Uh, she has. She is an Academy Award nominee Wow. Uh, for the movie Aaron Brockovich. Uh, she's done a lot of, uh, she's produced things for Quentin Tarantino, uh, specifically Django Unchained and Hateful Eight. Thing. I have seen Django. I've not seen Hateful Eight. Hey, Django's pretty good. Anyway. We almost saw Hateful Eight. We almost did. We still... I hear it's a three-hour movie, and there's an intermission in the middle. Really? A 15-minute intermission. Uh, I also heard there's no real climax to the movie. Like, it never, like, resolves. Weird. Yeah. I don't know about that. I haven't heard that. That's what I've... That's just what I've heard. Ah. That's what I've been told. AVG, go away. Okay. Um... Yeah, so she's joining them. So they have like a big time movie producer, big time television producer. She uh, she said that she really hit it off with the guy that's in charge of the activist sector. So hopefully that'll be fun. Yeah. Um, another thing I saw, I've been watching Game of Thrones. Bum bum ba uh, I will do it again. I've done that before. Uh, yeah, Game of Thrones. Tell me about it. I mean, it's all right. That's not what I'm talking about. I love Game of Thrones. Um, there's a new ABC television series oh, called really? Of Prophets and Kings. Oh yes. Which I guess is a retelling of the. David line of the Bible story. Yeah. And they want it to be, like, lusty and sensual. I'm like, that's really weird. Yeah, they're trying to make a Game of Thrones. They are. We watched the trailer for it, and I felt a little bit uncomfortable. I was like, that's like a Bible character. Yeah. One, it's about, well, first of all, David's all about that. 
Second of all, it's on ABC, so they're trying to make it less dating and sexual, but it's ABC, but it's, it's going to be in prime time, and they won't be able to show anything that like Game of Thrones does. Right. So it's just implied sexuality. Anyway, got me thinking, what if Game of Thrones wasn't like medieval times like it is? Mm-hmm. What if they made a new Game of Thrones, and it was just pirates? <laughs> Where does that come from? I like pirates, A man. pirates Game of Thrones? Well, that, like a pirates like themed, style? A pirates themed show... Very similar to Game of Thrones. Isn't that supposed to be what, what like Black Flag is or something? Like, there's some HBO, maybe Showtime. Maybe that's what it was. I saw a, I saw a commercial for it. I'm like, that'd be cool if it was Game of Thrones. Like, yeah. would that be awesome? That I would be Pirates. awesome. Uh, I love the storytelling of Game of Thrones, and if they could apply that and all the different storylines and how they all intersect like craziness. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Pirate Kings. Man, that's a uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. It is a little bit of that. Speaking of Pirates of the Caribbean, oh look goodness. at that segue. Uh, it. Pirate, where, where are my notes? Where'd it go? Yeah, Pirate so of the Caribbean comes out. Hey, I found it. Pirates of the Caribbean, May 2017. So we have a year, we have a year and almost a half. But a new there. pirate. It's a, it, it's now, a new do you pirate. know anything about it? No, I didn't look at it. Is it, I gonna, saw... is it gonna be like Jack Sparrow again? I think so. I think, uh, what's his name? Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp and Orlando Bloom are both gonna be at it. Oh, Orlando Bloom will be back. Which, I mean, that sucks. Hopefully you should help. I liked the old Pirates of the Caribbean. However, I didn't like how the second one ended. I think it's uh, called Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales. So the longest title in movie history. Yeah. Uh, perhaps. Top build cast. Johnny Depp. Orlando Bloom. No Keira Knightley. Interesting choice. Um, Jeffrey Rush. He's back in. He is Barbosa. Yes. Barbosa. Um, That's my pirate accent. Martin Kleba. I know. He's the good. small guy. The small pirate guy. Mm-hmm. No mention of the monkey. Jack. Monkey Jack. Oh, no, you, you know the yeah, monkey? I know the Monkey Jack. Uh, yeah, so that's gonna come out. That is gonna be any good. I don't know. Based I, on the most recent Pirates, the, of the most Caribbean recent was. one was disappointing, and the one before that. Was the first three no, I enjoyed. How did you like three? It was like four hours long. Uh, I mean, I liked it because it it like finished off the story. Uh, oh, the here's story the thing. They were in. Here's the thing. This is coming out. I think. I believe. I'm gonna fact check real quick. Uh, what's the what's the uh at World's End? That's yep. It. That's the movie. When did that come out? Do you know? 2007. That's what I thought. It came out in 2007? Yeah. So, this is 10 years after that. If you remember the end of Pirates of the Caribbean, at He World's comes End, back in 10 years. Johnny, or, uh, or Lander Bloom's like, we can't touch land for 10 years. And yeah. And then I'm coming back in 10 years. And I think that's what's going to happen here. Yeah, I'm assuming. I mean... It, so how much can happen in one day? I would hope so. I don't know. I know Kira Knightley. First of all, how is she not in this if well, he's coming back to see her? To answer your question, how much can happen in one day... The TV series 24. To continue, continue your point. A lot can happen in 24 hours. In yeah, time, so. but that's like with cars and planes and stuff. This is old boats. The pirate ships. Yeah, they're slow moving. That's true. He can be on land for one day. Yeah, but he's also Davy Jones, so he can kind of like do whatever he wants. In the sea. Right, but he can like show up in random places all the time. Because he's Davy Jones. Ugh. He's got like magical powers. I'm calling it right now, it's going to be good. Okay. I mean, I'm assuming if you go in with that mindset, then you're going to hate it no matter if it's good or bad. I don't know about that. I don't know. I mean, I feel like preconceived notions when you go see movies help form your opinion. They've had four movies. One of them is good. First one's really good. Which might have been a mistake on their part. The first one was good. That's the Legitimately good. Mistakenly. The second one, I was disappointed because the way it ended was way too dumb. It was like way too... It said to be continued literally on the screen. I was so mad. It like ends with Johnny Depp dying. Yes. I mean, he, he yes. for all that you know, he's dead. Oh, I found out recently, at the end of the second one, mm-hmm. when Barbosa walks down the stairs in the, in the witch's shack, yeah. none of the actors knew that he was showing up. They all thought it was going to be somebody else. Yeah. So I read, probably not true, because I read it on the internet, they were like, it's genuine reactions, because people didn't know that it was actually Jeffrey Rush coming down the stairs. Like, well, well, I mean, if they, yeah. that would be true if it was like, they only filmed it, filmed it once, right. they didn't like redo it a thousand times. I feel like... Right. Usually they reduce things. Like over in uh, Die Hard, yes, the first one, when Alan Rickman, uh, he's uh, I think he's falling, he's on like this uh, this contraption and it falls. Mm-hmm. And it's supposed to fall on count of three. Yeah, but they made it fall on the count of two to so, freak him out. Yeah, so his reaction is real. Oh movie. my gosh! So this is crazy. There's a little thing for it. Um, also, in uh, it's that movie with Jack Nicholson in the hotel. The Shining. The Shining. Um, the the act the director was super mean to the the woman act, actress. I can't yeah. remember her name. 
So, like, she was, like, terrified and scared of him the whole movie. Really? To make her reaction on screen that much better. Wow. That's, like, manipulation at its finest. Uh -huh. <laughs> at its best. <laughs> or at its best. Let's or more or at its sharpest. Because he has a knife in the... Yeah, so let's talk about something. Let's talk about some more movies. Okay. London, we saw The Revenant. We saw the we preview did. for London Has Fallen. And this ties into our training table conversation. It really does. That has been ongoing for quite some time. Uh, but really, it's Gerard Butler is the is the Channing Tatum. They're character. interchangeable because Olympus has fallen and White House down. Same movie yeah. came out like the same month. They they did. It was one of those dumb Hollywood's like we want a movie that has the White House getting blown up. Yeah. And so two companies are like, we oh, can do it better. Do Let's just do it. No, stop it. Anyway, anyway. just stop it. So Gerard Butler was in the first one, Olympus Has Fallen. Yes. And now he's in the second one. London Has Fallen. The president with, is kidnapped. With uh, Two-Face, Aaron Eckhart. Yep. And Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. Who, his voice will always suit me to sleep. I think he's president in this one, I'm not sure. Uh, no, I, I think the president is Two-Face. The president is Two-Face. But I think in Lo London Has Fallen, in the previews, it shows the president dying and Morgan Freeman's like, yeah, I think he's well, I VP. ran Wayne Industries, so why not make me president? Yeah, and then, worlds are and then he essentially calls in Batman to save the president, and Gerard Butler dies. Has Gerard Butler ever been in a superhero movie? Uh, he has been King Leonidas, which is basically a superhero, uh, except for he dies. Spoiler alert, wow. if you've not seen 300, if you haven't seen 300 which or came out, like, read your history books about the ago. Battle of Thermopylae, what? That's a real thing that happened. You also know that... Yeah, I know that. You also know that... <laughs> just, uh, just Gerard me. Butler is in Gods of Egypt. Have you seen the trailer for that? Uh, I have seen the trailer for that. Do you think it looks as bad as I think it looks? I think it looks terrible. I think Thank it's going to be a Redbox movie in like two months. They're putting a lot of money into it. I mean, they put lots of money into lots of movies that flop. Uh, I'm yeah, it's not going to be good. Yeah. I'm not excited about that. He was Beowulf. That's not really... Beowulf? A superhero. He's not a superhero. That's just like an epic tale. It's like, uh, he's just, I mean, that's a hero tale, but it's not a superhero. You right. know? Well, could be. Was he a super? No, he was not a super. I know, he's not very good. He was just like a very skilled hunter person. Monster killer, essentially. Tomorrow what? Never Dies. Did you know he was in Tomorrow Never Dies? I did Gerard not Butler. know that. That's crazy. What? I had no idea. Hold on, let me read you what his credits are. Leading seaman, HMS Devonshire. Devonshire. Nice. So he's, so he's an extra. An extra. <laughs> Good Solid. You. Good job, Gerard Butler. Uh, so Melinda has fallen. It's my rating so far. Yep. Uh, I'm not going to go see it in theaters. Darn too. I might see it on Netflix if it shows up. But Netflix is like getting rid of all their movies. Netflix is doing a whole bunch of original stuff. Yeah. And I'm okay with it. They've made, they've made some pretty good stuff. Have you watched Making a Murder yet? I have not. Gosh, dude, I have so many shows, you can't just like How jump something on top of me and be like... the news, and you're a social studies person. You just need to study the social... Well, I did. I have read news articles about it. I know all the controversy and the petitions that were signed and all that. Yeah, that's insane. It's crazy. People are going nuts over this show. You can really say, wow. Wow! Wow movie! We're on the war movie! Oh, war what a segue! Ah, you crushed that. I didn't even see it coming. You're like, just say wow. And I was like, wow. wow. And then it was actually a seg. So Warcraft Wait, is a movie. Tell me about it. And it's uh, directed by Duncan Jones. We have we have announced that it's going to happen. Yes. But what you have something new with this, I think. Maybe you don't. I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you know something I don't. I just directed by Duncan Jones, I believe is his name. He also did Source Code with Wait, Jake Duncan Jones? Jones? Which is not very bad. Is he the founder of Dunkin' Donuts? Not spelled the same way. Okay. Continue. That's all. <laughs> That's all I have. Okay. Do you, you, did I write this or did you write this? I don't know. We share a Google Doc so we can both write whatever we want. Yes. We have World at War craft movie slash COD movie. Yes. I don't know anything about that. Have we talked about Call of Duty movie yet? Uh, we have not talked about that at all. What do you think about a Call of Duty movie? Uh, I think you it's know. a war movie. Like, I'm not really sure. I didn't write this. Did you write this? I'm not sure. This is probably a little bit unprofessional, but Call of Duty movie okay. and a Skylanders film. So I don't know. Oh gosh, Skylanders, gross. Throw up in my mouth a little bit with, when I said that. Uh, we all know the Assassin's Creed movies coming out. I mean, there's like a trend right now for video games to hit more of the the media, right? Like these video game movies are coming out. We got esports hitting all these news channels. Freaking BBC has video game thing on, like, and Fox News. They both have, like, on their website, a video game. 
Peace Woods. A video game so- section. Video games. Except, of course, it's like hidden in like the extras area, but they exist. Um, what would you think of a Call of Duty movie? You always play the campaigns of Call of Duty. Um, I mean, essentially, the right. campaign of Call of Duty is like an action movie. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't see how a Call of Duty movie would be different from any other, like, war it, movie. It would just be, like, an action film. Like, it wouldn't be, like, yeah. the best action film of all time. It would just be an action film. It would be like, well, it's an explosion. Michael Bay. It would be a Michael Bay movie. Also, Michael Bay made a movie that made me cry. What? Was it Independence Day? No. A movie just came out <laughs> called 13 Hours. Yeah! That's about, um... The Benghazi attack. Yeah, Hillary Clinton's all over that. Yeah, and Jim Halpert from The Office and is Roy... Ripped. Yeah, he's he's ripped. But Roy and Jim Halpert from The Office are both two like main characters in this movie. Yeah, and it's all about the Benghazi attacks, which has like the Hillary Clinton scandal all over it. And uh, the movie legitimately made me cry. Like I was crying at the end of this movie. Can I? Uh, you can interject. Can I read you the top five uh, producer credits he has for an upcoming movies? Sure. Bad Boys Four. What? Transformers Five. Oh my gosh. Ouija Two. Ouija. I know. Ouija 2, <laughs> the Purge 3, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Out of um, the Shadows, uh, I'm throwing, uh, Jack Ryan, uh, Untitled Miami Project, Okay. Untitled Transformers Spinoff, <laughs> and then 13 Hours. Yeah, 13 Hours is good, but everything else that you just said makes me cringe. Gosh, I hate him. I hate him. Oh, he does Black Sails? That's the pirate Game of Thrones I was talking about. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so it's probably not that great. Ha! Ah, suck it. But I will say, props to him on that mo- that movie because it, it made, me, made me have the feels. You know what I'm saying? When everything was I felt gone, it. six men had the courage to do what was right. I don't know, what, I don't know anything about the Benghazi. I, I mean, essentially... You want to let me up right now? Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, so, in Benghazi, Libya, they had a revolution. Um, and after the revolution, the whole place was, like, really unstable. And all, these, all the countries in the world, like, pulled out their embassy staff... Uh, except for the U.S., we had, like, a temporary one we set up because we were trying to promote democracy. I mean, that's, like, what we do, right? Because we had Wi-Fi and there's an email. Essentially. Okay. Uh, so they set up... Uh, when was this? Huh? When, when was this? This was... 2000... 2011? I want to say 2011. Um, say. Yeah, it's 2011. And we, we, set, we set up, like, this uh, embassy. We have, like, a CI... The whole thing, like, takes place around this, like, CIA base that's, like, hidden, and it's, like, off the books. In Libya. Uh, in Benghazi, Libya. Okay. And essentially they set up this new embassy, but they don't, it's not, like, a real embassy. Wait, is this the movie, or is this the real This life? is the movie and real life, because the movie's based off the real event. It's a, okay. It's, like, it says this is a true story. Well, they also said about the revenant, which we'll get to. We'll get there. Um, but either way, they set up this like quasi embassy, but it's not quasi a real one. Mode. And the reason it's not a real one is because they didn't have enough money, and so they didn't have a marine contingent. They had two soldiers protecting the ambassador. And in the real life and in the movie, the ambassador essentially gets abducted and killed. Oh, spoiler alert! Uh, I mean, he gets abducted. Actually, he's dead when he gets abducted. But. They, they don't know that for sure. It's kind of like halfway through the movie figured out. So they're supposed to have like a whole platoon of people. They're supposed they have... to have a, a full marine detachment that, like every embassy the United States has, has a full time. How big is a full? It's like, I want to say it's like. 20 people? Yeah, it's 20 like 20 people? or 30 so uh, soldiers. Event. It's it's like, it's a, enough to protect from a mob of people. Like, and that's what ends up yeah. attacking this ambassador place. But they only have two. But they have two soldiers. Which is? Not enough. Jim and Roy? No. They're, see, Jim and Roy and the six people that it later. mentions, they're private military contractors. Mm-hmm. They're American citizens who used BMC. to be in the military who were hired on as protection for this, like, blacklisted CIA site that no one knows is about. Is it Blackwater? Uh, it is not Blackwater. Yeah. Um, it's only one I know. It's called, like, GSR or something. I'm not sure what it stands for. The Minutemen? For. It's the Minutemen. Fallout 4? Yes. The Minutemen show up from Boston. And they have laser muskets. Ooh. It's really exciting. They didn't see it coming. So what happens in real life? In real life, in, I guess the movie. Uh, they the these private military contractors. They are the main characters. Okay. They go in. They try and save the ambassador. The ambassador. They well, can't. They why can't, did the U.S. not send in troops? Because there were no ambassador. troops available, and there. What do you mean there's no troops available? Well, it's just like thirty. Huh? Well, there's no troops in Libya they because usually no, they can't. They they call the Afro. First off, they don't have like. 
the authority there's all these like red tape bureaucracy crap that goes on with the CIA and they're like we can't we can't do anything so they call like the Africa Corps they call like all these different like departments of the military and none of them can get troops there fast enough eventually like within 12 hours like some special forces arrive but they come in they're coming from like Italy so it's like a few hours then they get stuck in the airport it's really dumb um, but in real life what happens it, I mean the whole thing takes place in 13 hours like that's why it's called 13 hours uh, so by 13 hours, like everything is taken care of, but the the How immediate responders. Is it 13 hours. Yeah, actually, it was long. I had a lot of popcorn. I'm did just kidding. You it's watched it in theaters. I did. I saw it in theaters this An weekend. An hour and 44 minutes. Yeah, it was essentially these oh, private military corp people. They have to go in and like try and save all the people and protect all the CIA and like state officials that are hidden in the CIA facility from like hundreds of these. Crazy terrorists. It's not super political. Where's Hillary Clinton coming? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. There's like, apparently the reaction that the State Department had, which she was Secretary of the State at the time, was like really slow. Like she got an email and uh, disregarded it uh, or something. Spam. Yeah. I, I can't. Like she read something but didn't act on it quick enough and so that led to the ambassador dying uh -huh. and how long of a response it took for the military to actually show up. That's what I, I mean, that's what, from what I understand, I really have not researched the Benghazi thing, because generally what happens with scandals is like, scandalous. It's just on the news for months and months, and I just get tired of reading right. about it. Like the whole email scandal, I think is part of that. Oh. And I'm just like, I don't care. I'm so tired of hearing the same thing over and over again. Politics. <sighs> Either way, it's a good movie. It talks about the story of those six guys, and you kind of get to know them, their like, personal lives a little bit, which is like semi-accurate. Compare it to Saving Private Ryan. Uh, on a scale from one to Saving Private Ryan. On a scale of Olympus to Fallen to Saving Private Ryan, where is it? Uh, I would say it is a little bit below um, the Pacific. If you know, if you if you catch my drift. Is that right? No, no, no. The Pacific is like have you heard, have you heard of Band of Brothers? Yes. Uh, Band of Brothers is in the western. Um, oh, right. Hemisphere or the Western the part. Ring of Fire. The wet the yes, it's in the Ring of Fire. No, it's in the Western theater of World War Two, and the Pacific is the Stage same line. people. It's Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg. They made one about the Pacific. It's called the the Pacific. Um, the the Pacific is not also as, on the west. No, the Pacific is in the east, like Asia, the Asian theater, oh. like Japan is in the Pacific Ocean. Well, the Atlantic and Pacific. Do you, do you know your hemispheres? Atlantic, do we need to cover these Atlantic things? Ocean is on the east coast of the United States. Right, but that's, that's where Atlanta is. So the Pacific is all west. No, yeah, but you're thinking in terms of the United States. You're not thinking. Of course, of the I globe. am. It's like northern. I live in the Midwest. Southern, eastern, and western. You live in the western hemisphere. No, I mean, blame the British. Ones. They're the ones who made up all these map terms. <laughs> I don't even know where they're going. Why do we go by their maps? I don't know where they're going. Dude, they clearly. they clearly don't. They clearly don't. Obviously. The West Indies. <laughs> the West thinking freaking Christopher Columbus thinking it's the India and it's America. Come on, man. But he wasn't British, so we can't really blame him. Um they're re releasing the first generation of Pokemon. They are. Yes. For the three DS. Dang. Um however, they have said there's not gonna be there's not gonna be any restore points, and I think what they mean by that what what do you mean by restore? What points? I've generated from research is that you can't quick save anywhere. You, you can't, can't you can't what? just save in a. I think they have like save points very similar to like a Final Fantasy style, right? Where you go and you have to save like in a circle. Yeah. From what I understand, what I read, there's no save points. There's no restore points. So like, say you're trying to go to the power plant and you're yeah. trying to catch Zapdos. Yeah. You can't save right in front of Zapdos. And then try to catch it a thousand times. You get one shot. You get one shot. Oh my gosh. That's intense. Yeah. So I'm like, well, I don't really know about that. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that. Yeah. Cause that I like the sense. safety blanket of being able to save whenever I feel like it. Not that you really need a safety blanket as a Pokemon game. That's true. But, but it's just generally nice to have. Also, with Nintendo, Fire Emblem Fates is coming out in February. And there's a little bit of controversy surrounding this. <sighs> Do you know anything about it? Uh, Why don't you for, tell me what you know, and I'll tell you what I know. This is what I know, and I did not research this before we embarked on this podcast, so this is all just from reading t tweets, I think. Um, Fire Emblem Fates. Fates has a big romance thing in here, in, in the game. 
uh, where you can a dating like, simulator. Essentially, it's a dating simulator. As we've mentioned on this it's podcast not. from one of my students, it's it's a uh, he thinks that's, it's that's gonna be it. terrible. Challenge me to a Fire Emblem battle. He also did. I don't even know how to battle a Fire Emblem, but I'll gladly challenge him to Smash and only use Fire Emblem characters. Oh my gosh, he would love that. Um, so we can get that going. I if I only use Fire Emblem characters, I mean, I'm you'd only, only use, use Mark. I'm only using Mark. Right. He was one of your mains anyway, so he it's not even weird. it's not even hard for you to do it. To make that transition. Either way, uh, in the dating sim, there is essentially uh, homosexual relations that you can embark on, which is not new same to video games. Sex. Same sex relations, right? There's, there's two. There's two different ones. Uh, I mean, you could do this in Bioware games forever. Yeah. So I don't know why it's like super controversial for like a video. I guess it's because Fire Emblem is like not an intense. Like, is that all you know? Is that there's well, same-sex relations? Or there's same, well, I know that Nintendo then like pulled it out of the game and said, oh, never mind, we're taking it out okay. for the for the American release, and then went back on it. That's what so I heard. There now? I don't think there is. Okay, tell me it's what you know. It's a little bit more intense than that. Okay. Um, so there's this character. It's a girl, mm-hmm. and she's very playful. And she, when she's younger, she plays and like flirts with other girls just to be like weird and quirky. Yeah. Like that. Later, she grows up, and she's one of those... Same sex relationship op- options. So she's yeah. like, oh, I can be with this girl or whatever. I find girls attractive. Yeah. The main character, which you can choose to be in this game, either a guy or a girl, mm-hmm. if you choose a guy and try to start a relationship with her, she obviously likes women. Yeah. They start talking, you have a support relationship, and through that, once your support le- relationship gets high enough, you can marry that person, have kids, whatever. Yeah. So one day, um, the main character like puts a spell, like in a drink. This is how what I read. Puts a spell like in a drink, like a magic potion, in the drink of the of the girl that makes yeah. her swap genders in her mind of people. So like she doesn't swap genders, but like all the girl characters are now guy characters. So the main character to her is now female, which then she finds attractive. Later on through their support relationship, uh, it is revealed that that happened, and she still likes the main character as a as a male. Yeah. Um, but the big controversy is people are calling this um, Fire Emblem is like. Supporting drugs to uh, do away with homosexuality. I'm like, that's not happening at all. Oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. Right. What I it's magic. It's magic potions in a video game. Two things. One said that it is not consensual that he puts the potion with her drink. The other one is that it is consensual that she wants this to happen because she has feelings for him. Uh, I, I didn't mention this part. Um, she when she's on the battlefield yeah. and there's cute girls around, quote yeah. unquote cute girls. She can't focus on the battle, so she like gets damaged more. She oh, shoots wow. more. So she doesn't want to be distracted anymore, so she asks him to help her with this. And I think that's when it swaps genders, so then she no longer finds him attractive. So she becomes heterosexual? I think so. And I think it's cons- consensual by the most part. But people are starting this and they're like, wow, they're drugging. Oh my drug- gosh. And my, fi- my notes say, Fire Emblem drugging the gay away. Oh which, my gosh. I, don't know. <laughs> I get that now. <laughs> well, the first time I read that in your notes, I was like, What's what? what? <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. But that comes That's out next crazy. month, and I'm excited. Speaking of Fire Emblem, I downloaded a game on my phone called, let me check here, um, talk about Google Opinion Rewards, because that's how I got this game. Uh, so, one thing we've mentioned also, before... Diver is destroying New England right now. So good. Fine. Good. I want New England to, to fail. Ah. I want the Patriots to not be a franchise anymore. Wow. Uh, but on top of that, Google Survey... Google Opinion Rewards. Get Google Opinion Rewards randomly gives you surveys to take, and they give you based Google Play location. credit based on your location. And it ends up you half the time you're just making reviews for like Google Maps. Like that's yep. what I figured out, and it actually is tied to your name, so that's the thing. Yep. But either way, you get free money for it. So I'm like, what's that? You get free Google Play credit. Yeah, which then you can buy songs or games. Which we've both whatever. bought Chrono Trigger yes. w- with money from Google Opinions. Yes. Google survey rewards. rewards. I can't. I can't remember it. My short term memory is terrible. Anyway, I searched the. Oh, I also got two Batman comics from it. So I've gotten like twenty dollars out of this. And normally nice. you get about like the ten cents is the lowest you can get, and the highest you can get is like a dollar. And I get about two surveys a day. So it takes me a while, but I can get this stuff up. But on the Google on the Play Store, I looked for a Fire Emblem game. Mm-hmm. And I found one called Partia. Partia. T I A. Okay. And I downloaded it today, it was $4, and it blows. You so know, don't buy Partia? Don't buy it. Um, I thought it was going to be awesome, but it's not. You know how Chrono Trigger, you hold the phone via landscape? Yes. And you control it like that? Yeah. Partia, you hold the phone via portrait style, 
Uh oh. And they have. I hate those. Awful button. That's bad. And it's supposed to look like a Game Boy, but it's not. Yes. I anyway, I played that today. Played the first level. Like this sucks. And then I'm like, I really want to play Fire Emblem right now. Because they've made it almost exactly like Fire Emblem, except for that all the good stuff that makes Fire Emblem Fire Emblem. Oh. So they made a cheap knockoff? Like the gameplay and stuff like that. So All like, the reviews on it are really good. Well, probably uh, half of them are robots. So many reviews are robots nowadays. <sighs> Can't trust them. Like Amazon. Oh my gosh. Really? Yeah. Like a good portion of the reviews are robot reviews. Cool. You can like hire a company or like buy a program that essentially makes fake reviews positively for your... Oh. Maybe we should use that for a podcast. Nah, we, do that. we won't do that. Um, because we don't have any money. Let's talk comic book movies. Oh my goodness, comic book movies. Do you have one specifically that you want to talk about? I have two: Marvel and DC. Oh wow! Uh, Grant Gustin. Do you know who that is? He uh, plays yeah, the Flash. I know him. I've seen I him. I don't know you guys. In a cup, we have a podcast episode about this. The Flash. That's what it's called. I think. I don't know what it's called. Anyway, he is not cast. They casted somebody else to play the Flash. In, in the, the DC movie. movie. In the DC movie. That's so disrespectful. It's, it's That's so, so disrespectful. He, he said he wanted to do it, but he uh, supports the guy that got cast. Yeah. I'm like, why would you do that? DC is in shambles. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah. There's like no continuity in their universe. Mm -hmm. What the cuss? Um, also, we've talked about this before. Yeah. Zack Snyder, a while ago, uh, gave a statement as to why he put Doomsday in the trailer. Which I think was a mistake. Right. But I have a theory. Do you remember my theory? Uh, no. Remind me. Refresh right. me and the listeners. Doomsday, my theory is that Doomsday is very equivalent to what Rhino is okay. in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Oh, so he just like, shows, shows up, up at the very end to wink at a larger universe. Yeah. Zack Snyder says this. Uh, to us, it really made sense to give Doomsday to the audience now. I really wanted to make the audience a promise that, though I'm super excited and happy and fulfilled by the content, or by the conflict of Batman and Superman, there's also a bigger world to start to think about. Okay. Which makes me think it could be very similar to Rhino. Where he just like shows, shows up. up right it's like a cameo. And then credits. Okay. Same thing. I'd be better with that, but if that's like the major twist in the movie, I'm going to be really mad. Which I, like, that's, I assumed you when I saw it. Then him cliffhang Doomsday than actually have a fight with Doomsday with Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman? I mean, if... I mean, what they do when... So, like, I thought, going into the movie, it would be Batman versus Superman. Obviously, neither of them are going to die. But, like, there's a potential for that happening if they really wanted to. Um, and I thought that was what the movie's going to be about. But Doomsday now that they have Doomsday, guess what? The, the heroes unite, and we don't have a fight, really, between Superman and Batman because we have Doomsday. That's like, right. and, and, like, I don't want that. And Lex Luthor. I want them to fight. I don't want... Doomsday, Lex Luthor, Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman... All in the same movie. It's a lot. It's a lot of characters. Remember Spider-Man 3? I do With remember all the superheroes and supervillains? Yeah. Remember how bad that did? Yeah, it was really bad. But I don't think this will be like that. I don't think so either, because the writing was absolutely t but terrible for Tobey Maguire. There's going to be a lot of stuff in here. Oh my gosh. So, not that excited. Whew. Um, That's my DC news. Marvel news. The Russo brothers, who, for those who don't know, directed Captain America Civil War. Okay. Directed Captain America The Winter Soldier. Captain okay. America Winter Soldier is probably one of the top three Marvel movies that have come out. Infinite, or, uh, Civil War is going to be awesome. They are also directing part we one so. and part two of Infinity War. They oh, have wow. said that they want to do a Black Widow movie. A Black Widow solo movie. I, I would be game for that. That would be awesome. I would love that. Because so she's not a super. Rather... She's just a hero. Oh, she's pretty super. I mean, what's her superpower? Boobs. Yeah, but don't lots of people have that? Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's mildly inappropriate. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, what? Daredevil season two. Um, Charlie Cox, who plays Daredevil, yeah, has he's the man. By the way, okay, he's cool. Uh, I like has said that the hallway scene, which is my favorite scene from Daredevil season one, mm -hmm. is in episode two, where he fights people in the hallway, and it's all one uncut scene. Yeah, it's awesome. There's gonna be another one like that in season two, except, except he says. Quote, it's like on crack. Oh my goodness. So I'm, gonna be I'm so excited. So the Punisher's going to be there, and Electra's going to be there, and Daredevil's going to be there, and people are going to be flying through walls. I'm excited. I love long shots like that. Yeah. Where like if people mess up, they have to do it all over again. Mm -hmm. Love it. I'm excited. That looks good. <sighs> uh, some more news. 
Tom Clancy is coming out with a game. Yeah. And by Tom Clancy, I mean in Tom Clancy's universe. Yeah. I don't think he's actually making this game. Um, it's called The Division. You may have heard of it before. Uh, it's essentially if you an online... You I don't know, like, get out of the hole in your cloud. I guess they could be just playing Fallout 4. Or like, they could still be playing The Witcher 3. Because there's so much content in the game. Either way... Uh, I did start Fallout 4. Okay. You did just start it. And you texted me something. Yeah, the freaking... The freaking Queen Myrler. Queen Myrler is stupid. Yeah, I know. It was really difficult. It was uh, the po- it's all the poison she shoots. Like, yeah. I can't move anywhere. Stupid. I tried to report it. Did you mine it? Uh, did you do what I did? I, that's what I first... That's what I did at first. Really? It worked. Yeah. I got another strategy from a guy at work. I'm gonna try it. Okay. Well, it worked for me, but I can see how that could be difficult. Um, either way, The Division is coming out for release um, March 8th, 2016. And that's next month. That's two months. That is in two that's months. A month almost a month away. But month we're, we're still in January. Barely. We got a week. Either way, uh, this game has a lot of hype around it. It Are is you? supposed to be a direct competitor to Destiny. Uh, as in, it's the same type of genre. Where it's this um, it's like this hybrid between online RPG, but also like competitive shooter. Um, slash, like, it's like PvP, PvE. Uh, just kind of like this. And some issues have already popped up around it. The beta begins the 29th of January, uh, which is actually this week. So I'm excited to see what actually people's experiences with this it's game. A beta. It is a closed beta. Um, but already there's been reports of inventory issues uh, with this game being kind of clunky, kind of like annoying inventory controls, which may you seem... No one really... else had that, Destiny. Yes, Destiny had that. For sure. You know how long it took them to fix that? A whole Forever. year. It was that plug-in for my browser that really fixed it for me. Uh, you could like, tr- did you ever use that browser thing? It was like a browser thing. Uh, either way, uh, so they're having some inventory issues, but they're they're catching it right now. Like it's already got attention, so hopefully they'll fix it for the actual release of the game. Uh, but the thing I want to talk about this game is, will it finally put the nail in the coffin for Destiny? I hope it does. I think it will. Ouch. I hope it does because I'm just, like, Destiny up to this point just has been one of those things that I feel like it's dragged on for so long. Uh, there's gonna, there's an update coming in Destiny in March. There is. Uh, and apparently... From what I understand, all the new updates are going to be free, like DLC. Which, what, I mean, what happens to the people who bought the season pass? I don't know if there was. There definitely was a season pass. Uh huh. Wasn't Taken King the second DLC? Uh-huh. What's the third DLC? No, it was like the third. I think it was the third. Oh, was it? It was Dark Below, House of Wolves, Thank you. Okay. So that was the season pass with those three. E- yes. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think Taken King is part of it. I don't think Taken King is part of the DLC or really? season pass. Okay. Well, I'm really confused about that. They charge like sixty dollars for it. Yeah, I mean I didn't get the de- I didn't get the season pass because I was like, I'm gonna buy these individually because I don't know if I actually like this game yet. <laughs> yeah. Which and is since- I didn't buy House of Wolves. So I, I didn't but no, I eventually did. No, I took. I just got the Taken King. No, no I didn't. I didn't get that. Dark Below. I got Dark Below, but what was the thing with... Uh... No, nope, it was the Dark Below. That's the one I got. Either way, <laughs> the, now you got me on all these tangents, and I don't even know where I'm talking. Um, Welcome to the podcast. Yes. <laughs> Destiny. Uh, I'm wondering if the crowd is going to move towards the Division. Apparently, there's a lot of disunity and it's anger in the community around Destiny as a result of the newest update in Destiny, which has, like... What was that? Uh, well, it has, like, apparently the newest update for February and uh, recently is this Valentine's Day thing. There's, like, a Valentine's Day event, which... Do, what? Does the uh, bowcaster... Uh, what are they? The hunter? The hunter that uses the bow? Yeah. Does it have, like, Cuban wings? Okay, maybe. Does it shoot love arrows? I hope so. Uh, apparently it's like it's just like a dual thing where you can be with one person Ooh. and you'd be like a couple you know like couple up Ooh. or something and they're like decorating the crucible tower or the tower just the tower, just the tower. Uh, that's how long it's been since I've played Destiny like um, either way one of the major figures in the Destiny community his name is Triple Wreck he has a YouTube rant what I mean that's I read an article on Forbes.com that really? had him listed as a major character yeah. he's a streamer uh, he's been constantly streaming the game since, like, it came out, essentially. Uh, has a bunch of YouTube 
videos, people follow him. Uh, he Want to do our favorite segment on the show? We'll say it. See where Destiny is on the Twitch Ooh, site. Ooh, we've done this multiple times. Let's check it out. Uh, maybe he's on. We don't even know. Either way, he's like kind of like slowed down because Destiny's been plagued recently with connectivity issues, uh, with lag in the game, uh, and specifically they, the newest... There it is, 19th. With 11,000 viewers right now. Um, apparently, they started doing skill-based matchmaking, yeah. which on the surface sounds all right, but there are some problems that are associated with skill-based matchmaking. Um, for instance, uh, Destiny is not... This is my favorite segment, finding where Destiny is on the Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you're so excited. Uh, apparently... Destiny doesn't have dedicated servers, so it means it's peer-to-peer, which means that you could be matched with somebody who's P2P. your skill level, P2P. but is in, like, China. China. And so you end up getting, like, a huge lag issues, and um, in Triple's video, he talks about uh, all the problems going on with, with Destiny right now, and essentially says that Destiny as is is dead. And he's he thinks, well, the article that I read was making the argument that Destiny's crowd is going to move probably to the Division, assuming the Division is good. But they're so different. They are different, but they're the same genre. Destiny is rated teen. Right. Division is rated in. But I don't really don't think that's going to have that much of a bearing. But I think the Division is like a strategic shooter, and Destiny is a running gun arcade shooter. I think they're really different. I don't think the Division and Destiny are even going to have a lot of overwhelming o- overlapping Wait, people that play it. Really? Yeah. Why? They're so different. But Tom Clancy game, also... Like a ra- like a Rainbow Six game, like it's it's not Tom Rainbow, Clancy but is it, based off is, of Rainbow Six. But this is so different than any Rainbow Six game that's come out since. It's still forever. like a cover based shooter, strategic, high tech shooter, and Destiny is but it, an arcadey thing. And our, that, but it, it's so much more than just an arcadey thing. That's it's an cool. online shooter with that's community based, that is PvP and PVE oriented, which is what the division is. Yes, the storylines are different, and some of the game mechanics are going to be different. I think all the game. So pointing a gun and shooting, and collecting loot and gear. The way and... you point a gun and shoot are very different. That's a whole feel of the game. That's the main mechanic of the game. If it's different from Destiny okay. than it is from uh, The Division... I would argue that that is a very small thing that's different. The, the way you point a, shoot, but a that, gun I mean, in, Destiny, in Call of Duty versus Battlefield, those right. are very different. I mean, it I can feel like different. I'm, that's, I'm not, you're, yes, but that's what makes a shooting game good versus a bad shooting game. But that does not make them different types of games because the feel of the joystick is different. They are different types of games. and They're the same type of game. They're not. And we're not even arguing about what type of game they are. We're arguing about what type of person is going to play it. Right. Someone who wants to play an online shooter that has PvP and PvE and has a community that does loot grinding and all that crap, It's the, that's the same in both. You have loot grinding, you have PvP, you have PvE. That's what I'm saying that those types of people, they're tired of Destiny. Well, I don't blame Because them. Destiny has been crap, and they keep getting short-handed. And, De- and Bungie's been handling their community like crap, apparently. Thus says Triple Rec, who I'm sure has a lot more information on that than I do, because I don't play Destiny anymore, because I thought it was crap a while ago. Though I did enjoy it when I played it, yeah. before I got burnt out. Because uh-huh. it's the same thing over and over again. It was six months after the game came out. Yeah. Less than six months? No. Uh, it's crap. Yeah, I mean, we kind of stopped playing. I and think then I stopped playing around June. I stopped, and then the first DLC hit, and then I started playing again. Yeah. For like two weeks, and then I was done again. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, I personally think that it, assuming the division is good, which it's not out yet, so I can't make a whole lot of arguments. Everyone's so hyped for that for the way. division. But it's pretty hyped. I've seen so many things about it. I think it'll attract the same crowd as Destiny. Tony disagrees. That's fine. You can make your own decision, listeners. But either way, the division's coming out. It's kind of a big deal, and Destiny's dead. So, Aha. Uh, beyond that, Sucking. some other huge news that I care about: Star Wars Episode Eight has been delayed. Bum, bum, bum. You may have seen this online. It was a huge deal. Pretty oh. much every video game. Oh, go ahead. Back to your previous topic: The Division, third-person shooter. Third-person shooter. You can't that tell me different. that first-person shooters and third-person shooters are so similar that people will play both of them. Just because it has the same gameplay mechanics. It's of PvP and PvE. Okay, uh, it, I did not, was not aware that it was oh. third. So, I guess I'm wrong. The whole game is completely different. It's not online. It's not PvP. It's not PvE. There's no loot grinding. 
or community-based shooting Thank at you. all. Star None Wars. of that is the same. <laughs> so Star Wars? So still the same. Similar. That's not, not not the exact same. It's not. But they're similar. Yeah. It's similar. I doubt it. It's similar. It's similar. I'm going to say it as many times until you agree with me. Ah, um, the biggest difference? Okay. The Division has a story. Whoa! I can't even Can argue it! Burn? I can't even ah. argue it! Oh my gosh. Uh, Star Wars Episode Eight delay. It is now going to be December 15th of 2017 instead of the previous release date that I believe was in May. Um, and this... It was in June. For, what? I think it was in June. Was it in June? Okay. I thought it was May something, but it doesn't matter. Either way, it's delayed to December 15th. Um, I thought it was in Ray. And the... the what? May Ray. May Ray. Ray. I thought it was going to be May 4th. May 4th with you. Not really, though. But I thought it was going to be in May. Um... The rumors... So Disney, when they announced this, they didn't say why. Really, in the announcement, they focused about how awesome Episode 7 was. But some rumors that have been can you blame them? around... Oh, I mean, 7 was so good. We loved it. And if you wonder what we think about it, we have a podcast episode about it. It's called Star Wars Episode 7 Review. Force Awakens. Which is really good. Or something like that. It is something like that. Paraphrased. It's very clearly titled. Oh my gosh. Uh, so. Either way, the rumor is that because Episode 7 was so good... And the reaction of the community to Poe, Ray, and Finn, they've decided that they're going to rewrite parts of the script so to expand on Poe, Ray, and Finn. Uh, because apparently there's like these two new girls that are in uh, episode eight that aren't in episode seven, and they were going to be like major characters with a lot of screen time and things, but now they're going to like make them smaller. They're still going to be in it, but they're going to be smaller characters, and they're going to use that time. To then expand on like Poe and Ray and Finn, Ooh. so that should be interesting. Also, uh, Star Wars is really strict on like uh, their information; like they don't want people to know what's going to happen. Sure. Force Awakens had uh, a code name, and the code name was like Foodless Productions Ltd. was like their code name cool. they used when they bought everything, so no one knew what was going on. Um, episode six, Return of the Jedi, had the code name Blue Harvest. And apparently what people have found is that the newest code name, they think, is Space Bear. Star Wars Space Bear is like the code name nice. for the new one. That's uh, it, it, well, that's what it, that's what I read. That's the that's the rumor. Uh, and part of part of the problem with pushing back the the date of release is that now it has to compete with Avatar 2, except for JK after Star Wars Episode 8. Moved its release date. Avatar, in response, delayed to. See. Delayed as well. They're delayed delayed delay. to as well. So. See, when you wrote, when I read your notes. Okay. It said competing with Avatar 2, and I thought, The Last Airbender? Like, no. No. You're talking about James Cameron's Avatar I'm talking about Avatar Blue People 3D No movie. one cares about Avatar anymore. I don't know. Do you know anything about Avatar, the first movie? You saw it. In I theaters. did see it. It was like Pocahontas. Is but that all you 3D know? Blue Air? Is Blue that all you remember about it? No, I remember There's, all of it. Tell me about it. What's the main character's name? I don't remember the main character's name. You remember any character's names? Oh, no. See? You know the main... See, this is... I was... I was... Uh, read about this. I was thinking about it. And heard a podcast about it. Avatar 2... Avatar 1 is like the highest grossing film of all time. Right. Nobody cares about it. Nobody remembers. It came out like 10 years ago. Everyone saw it in theaters. But you can't remember names. Okay. You What's... can't remember storyline. You... Like... Okay. Jim, like Titanic. Mm -hmm. Classic. Uh, Super Private Ryan. I don't remember All any of their names. You don't remember Rose Titanic. or Jack? Or I do now. I, I you can said fly, that, I remember it now. Or don't let go, Jack. Like all these quotes, all these lines okay. from all these famous movies. Mm -hmm. No one remembers anything from Avatar. It well, was a movie that everybody saw what was because Avatar? it was mesmerizing. Why do people like it? Why Nobody did it, why likes did, it. They never went to it. Why did it, go, why did it do so well? Because it was like one of the first 3D movies. Yeah. They had it in IMAX. Yeah. Because it was so good because the CGI was so good for this. Right. Movie. So that's what people remember. I mean, that's what I remember about it. Yeah, but now that has to compete with so many other things that... You don't think it's going like, to be a big deal? No. I feel like it will be. And he kind of missed his chance. Like, Avatar 1 was so huge. Now Avatar 2, like... It's too far away, is that what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, maybe. Are you going to rewatch a three and a half hour blue per person movie so you know yeah, what happens know. in Avatar 2? I mean, I remember what happens in Definitely Avatar not. 1. I just don't remember their names because I haven't seen the movie in a while. Avatar but... 1, they go and they're trying to mine this giant space tree right. and then they have sex with their tails that's all I know the guy is in a wheelchair then he can run right that's all I know the guy gets hired to go help with 
this group of researchers, but also mining people. Yeah. And they go and find the resource, and they want to, the biggest deposits under the, the space tree. The tree of life. Tree of life. Oh, and then, I mean, that's, that's the home of all these aboriginal <sighs> people on the planet. And I don't know, wanna, I don't want to get through the whole story, but I remember the whole story. I just don't remember the names. Such a random it's question. Because the, that's because the story isn't... Because I haven't seen it. Because the story isn't complicated. Because I don't have the movie on Blu-ray. Because the story isn't complicated. <laughs> it's not. It's Pocahontas. Exactly. So just remember that. Just with space aliens. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing spectacular about it. No, there was something spectacular about it. Was it CGI? The C- it was beautiful at the time. Like, in comparison, it was awesome. At the time. I don't think it has a legacy. Well, the legacy is that you can wow people with, like, mesmerizing effects. That's the legacy. I've only seen it once. I don't ever plan on watching it again. It's one of those movies. I've seen it. I think I've seen it. I saw it once at theaters, and then I saw it once outside of theaters, and I was like, Pocahontas. <laughs> so, uh, Star Wars Episode Eight delayed to the 15th of December. And then that was when, also, Avatar 2 was going to come out. But then they were like, just kidding, we're not releasing on that day, because Star Wars is coming out. Because everyone should be afraid of Star Wars, because it's going to destroy the box office. That's what DC do it. Civil War. Yep. They're afraid of Civil War. They should be. They should be, because Civil War is going to be awesome. We, we hope, we hope so. Knows. We really hope so. If it's disappointing... It won't be. It won't. It can't be. It. it can't be. It's Disney. They do good things. It's the Russo Brothers. It's, I, don't know, I don't know the Russo Brothers well enough to trust them. They did... They did... So, Winter Soldier. They did one movie. One movie was good. They, they, they must be gods of directing that can't do wrong. Let me see. That's like see what you're this. saying. Even good directors go wrong sometimes. Uh, I can't look them both up at the same time. Oh, no. Wait, they're both doing it? Yes. Together? They're, like, co-directing? They did the community? The, the TV show? I have not watched it, though. I've heard good things. Um, there's a lot of TV shows. That's one of them. What's the other Russo's name? Joe? Joe. Joe Russo! Uh, Captain America Winter Winter Soldier, we know that. Yeah, they just work together on everything. Yep. Well, um, I think that brings us to our main topic. Uh, we want want to talk about... That's my impression of... What? Tom Hardy. (laughs) Yeah, Tom Hardy the entire movie. (laughs) We're down here in the red... And everywhere. You know he has a British accent? We went through the list. You know he's actually British? Well, I don't care. I can't understand him anyway. I went through the list of movies I've seen that he's in. Yeah. Five I've seen that I that I remember that him he is in. Yeah. Three of them I don't understand him. Uh, I felt like Tom Hardy in The Revenant, for the first 15 minutes of the movie, I had trouble understanding what he was saying. Horror. I feel like after that first little bit, though, that I, I could understand him. It just, just took some adjusting. You had to, like, intently listen to what he was saying. Yeah. It was, it was interesting. I think he was a good bad guy, though. If you consider him a bad guy, no. do you consider him a bad guy? No, I haven't seen him in a long time. Do we need to? It's been like a week. <laughs> do we need to go through the storyline real quick? Yes. All right. Uh, storyline of this movie. Are we doing non-spoilers and then spoilers? Um. Are we doing spoilers right now? Do you want to do? Listen. Non- let's do non-spoilers. Non-spoilers. First. The Revenant was good. Go see it. I enjoyed it. Uh, it was uh, a brutal tale of. What it was like to live in the West. It's like... I think it was the Midwest. It's like real... It's No, it's... it's I mean, there were mountains. It's like Montana. Right, which is not the Midwest. That's the West. Like South, North Dakota. North Dakota is still West. It's like the... Well, it should be the Midwest. It's in the middle of the United States. Well, well, that, I mean, it's about the progress of American civilization. The Midwest <sighs> is the mid part of the expansion period. And the last part is the West of the expansion period. So Indiana... And Ohio and Kentucky. What do you think of the location? You think the locating shot, the setting shots were really good? Oh, it was beautiful. Right? It was absolutely beautiful. Wasn't awesome. Yeah. Um, who else do you think could have played Leo Leo's character? Uh, that's a good question. Because I have kind of some mixed feelings about Leo in this movie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I thought he did a good job. Mm-hmm. I just don't think but his body type is that he's like not intimidating. A, he's not like a. He's not really huge. Well, I don't know if he's supposed to be intimidating. Is he? Right. I, I mean, I think the movie really is about grit, like toughness of character. True grit. It's really about grit, and I think he shows that through his character. Um, but there are just some things that he does, and I'm like, I feel like if you were like 20 pounds more of muscle, you'd be a lot more intimidating. What is? Wait, 
But was he an I'm Englishman sure. or a Native American? I think he was an Englishman. Who? Leo? Yeah, yeah he was He was a Western oh, person. He was a European. Was His name was Glass. Yeah, John Glass, I think. Was it John? I don't know. Just they always called him Glass. Glass. Uh, no, he, he was a European descended person. He's like a frontiersman. And wait, are we in the spoilers? No. Okay. Uh, who else could play him? Is that the question we're on? I think <laughs> Mark Hamill. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I can't think of any characters right now off the top of my head. Any actors? Maybe Tom Hardy could have played Leo's character. <laughs> Big ol' eye roll. Yep. He's he's eye rolling me right now. He's not very happy with that comment. Uh, Do you have somebody in mind, Tony? No. Since you're asking the question, I can't think of anybody. Oh, okay. Well, this is a really here. difficult question um, to answer. Well, what do you think of Young Harrison Ford? There is. Oh. Really? Yeah. Huh. Oh yeah. Have you seen The Fugitive? Yes. Yeah. I think so. It's like not the same because it's not nearly as brutal in that movie, but there was a lot of long establishing shots. Like this is where we are. This is what the wilderness looks like. Yep. I'm like, that's really cool. But I really like those shots. Yeah. I really like, like that nature part. There's lots of music, too. The music, I, th- I thought, felt well. Felt good for those scenes. Mm-hmm. Specifically when they like cut away to just like landscape scene. Mm-hmm. I was like, the music really makes this nice. And at first I thought it was weird. I was like, this is a weird shot. Like, why do they keep doing this like weird looking up at the sky with the trees everywhere? Oh, yeah. Like, there's all these landscape shots. that, But I think by the end of it, I kind of got the meaning of it. Like, there's some meaning behind it. Specifically the wind. Is that a spoiler? I think it's in the spoiler section, though. Um, there's a lot of long shots with no cuts, which is, like, what I like. Mm-hmm. A lot of, like, action scenes that don't have any cuts in them. Yeah. Which is nice. It's one of my favorite things. Uh, uh, also, what do you think of the performances? Pretty much all real effects. Too. Oh, yeah. Mostly real. What do you think of the performances of the cast? Uh, I thought, overall, it was good. It was a very grit, gritty movie. It was kind of, like... It was dark, but it was still beautiful at times. Like, it wasn't all grayscale. It's, all, it's not like Skyrim, where everything was just, like, grayscaled over. And Was that Skyrim? Which game was that? I was thinking about Tom Hardy. Uh, I actually really liked Tom Hardy's performance, with the caveat of it was hard to understand him at first. That's, that's what Tom Hardy does. He's such a gritty character. Like, dark. Like, because I think Mad Max, and I think that... But then I saw an interview with him, and he's actually British. And his yeah. accent was, like, British yeah. accent. Yeah. I was like, what is going on? Because he has this, like, this really thick southern accent in the movie. Uh-huh. And he's really hard to understand. Yep. But eventually, you get to the point where you can understand him. He's, like, gum cancer. Yeah. Like, that, like, I've been chewing tobacco my whole life, and now yeah. the bottom half of my jaw is falling off. Yeah. Like, Why don't we go over here, there's one thing on that. Yeah. That's what he sounds like. It's legitimately what he sounds like. Um, what do you think of... Uh, the kid. I don't know his name. So, Leo... The... Not, not Leo's kid, the other kid. That was with Tom Hardy. Oh, I thought he did a good job. I thought, because he, he comes across throughout the movie, um, I mean, you kind of see the progression of his character. He kind of starts a little innocent, and then, without spoiling anything, like, He's you, no you kind of see the loss of his innocence, and then, um, his, how he handles that by the end of it. Yep, it's funny to watch you. I'm trying not to spoil anything, because <laughs> <laughs> you put this restriction on me. No there spoilers. is a uh, in the trailer. Mm-hmm. It clearly shows that a bear is mauling Leo DiCaprio. Yeah, so that should not be a surprise. So let's talk about that. For that a was oh, you recently so went to brutal. Yellowstone. I did, and, and I saw. In, I watched in the process. <laughs> you bought a handgun to protect yourself from bears. I mean, I didn't take the handgun. That but was... you wanted to. I, I thought about it. Do you, after seeing that bear attack, yeah. do you have any doubt in your mind that that pistol would have helped you in a bear attack at all? Well, considering that that bear attack was computer generated, and the bear that I saw when I was at Yellowstone was not nearly the size of that bear, if the bear that I saw had attacked me, I feel like I could have put it down with a handgun. It was also a small bear. Yeah. The bear, I mean, if I got attacked by a bear the size of the bear in this movie, I would have died. Also... That's what I thought, because we saw it together, I'm like, but also, if this happened, like, Justin Sanga would do nothing. Because the bear got shot. Dude, yeah, he I got shot wait to twice. Try. Yeah. He got shot twice by a muzzleloader. Yeah, and how big is the friggin... It's a fifty caliber muzzleloader, probably. I have a forty five caliber handgun. If I put ten shots 
of 45 caliber in something as opposed to two shots and the two shots freaking kill the bear spoiler they do they no they it don't. does yes they do he, it bleeds out no, it he, dies he kills it with a knife he kills it with a knife okay you're right he does kill it with a knife <laughs> he stabs it he, I mean he essentially makes the, the bear bleed out which I'm sure the gunshots helped <laughs> Listen, the bear brushed off that first gunshot. Oh, yeah, it does. He was like, it definitely does. Feel. Which a bear would. Right? It's because a 600 pound bear. Yeah, it has adrenaline and it's pumping and it's going crazy. And it's a bear. And it's a bear. Right. But bears are not impervious to bullets. I'm going, well, this one looked like it was. Well, it's also CG. I'm going uh, straight up spoilers now because we're going to talk about this bear fight okay, a little more. Okay, let's yeah. do it. So spoilers, 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 go. Your pistol will not do anything to a bear that size. Yeah. In I, close quarters like that. First of all, okay. I don't think you have the calm nerves nor the experience okay. in the wilderness to put that many shots into a bear that size if it's charging at you. If I did, would it kill, Would it do anything? How many shots? Are you, how many shots is it in your clip? Eight. In your magazine? Eight. 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 Forty-five caliber rounds. That sh- they go faster than a muzzle loader does. I would still say no. Okay. A six hundred pound bear. Those things are terrifying. You're throwing around six hundred pounds. Is that really I mean, how how big the bear was? Let's look. I don't know how big the bear was. What do you think? That was a common black bear? Uh, that was not a black bear. That was a grizzly bear. Black bears can fight. Black bears are not as aggressive as grizzly bears. So I'm only <laughs> helping your case by saying it's a grizzly bear. <laughs> I spelled it wrong. Twice. No, grizzly bears are for... Black bears actually aren't that scary. It's grizzly bears that you gotta watch out for. Male, 600 pounds. Female, 290 to 440. So it was probably a female bear, because there's cubs around. There were cubs. So a 440 pound bear. Okay. A mother... Mm-hmm. That's enraged that you're too close to her cubs. Right. I don't think anything's stopping that. Uh, a minigun would stop that. Okay. A missile launcher would stop that. So something would. Bears are terrifying. They are terrifying. I'm not. I'm not arguing the fact that they're terrifying. But people kill bears with guns. Like if you're in Alaska, you have free. Like people carry around big revolvers and stuff with high calibers. So tubes protect them from grizzly bears. Actually. It's a real thing. When I was in Alaska with my uncle on oh, yeah. a Boy Scout trip, mm-hmm. he brought a sawed-off shotgun. That's a good idea. Which has a higher chance of hitting a bear and doing more damage than a... Well, potentially. Uh, It'd have to be really close for you to actually do anything, though, with a sawed-off shotgun. Probably. Well, it might not have been sawed-off. I don't remember. I just remember him loading it, mm-hmm. and he's like, let's go. I'm like, blah! <laughs> <laughs> This is awesome. No, uh, but legitimately, people in Alaska carry around handguns. Big caliber handguns. Now you're looking it up because you just want to be right. <laughs> Classic Tony Justin argument. What it takes right to now. kill a grizzly bear. Ooh, how exciting. Anyway, that bear fight is so gross. Talk about it. Uh, uh, so Leonardo gets attacked with his mama bear and starts like clawing the crap out of him. And at one point, slices his throat, which I thought was... Oh, he's dead. I thought he was dead at that point. He slices everything. I mean, like his, his back. whole back is just, like, clawed up, chewed up. He gets thrown around a bunch. This is the longest article I've ever read. Uh, there's not... I just want a list of... And then, like, the bear jumps on top of him and starts, like, putting his weight on his head. And, like, there's so many things that happen. I think it's impossible for him to be alive. But I guess it's based on a true story. So Yeah. I guess he did live. Maybe it was more dramatic in the movie than it was in real life, but I don't know how he could survive that. Especially, like, without modern technology, how did he not die from infection? Exactly. It was a... I mean, he gets some immediate medical attention from, like, a field medic. He gets, like, sewn up a little bit. Yeah. But, uh... I'm not sure how he survived it in real life. But he did. So that's my description of the bear fight. Did, did Have you found your answer yet? No... Um, ba, ba, ba. No. Wait. Okay. What's I guess so. eight eight bullets from a forty five going eight hundred and eighty three feet per second? Because I actually looked at my ammo. And that's how fast it goes at fifty yards. At fifty yards, it's going that fast. At a so closer than that, it's uh, going faster. Raged, enraged, charging bear. Okay, assuming you can put all eight shots on it, I think it would die. Really? Yeah. No. Not at all. You hit it in the head, it's dead. That's a big assumption. You hit it in the head, it's all dead. eight shots? Right. You're all, I well, mean, are, you, are you standing on your ground or are you running away? I don't, well, I don't know. I'm saying if, if someone yards, could, if, a, if a person was I'm highly trained... Person, I'm talking about you specifically. Okay. Because 
in this movie, Leo was a highly he was a tracker, so he's been in the world of right. But he got caught on a, like off guard well, in this case. Kind of. There's a lot of what ifs well, in this situation. He knew it was there. He well, he was he he saw the baby cubs. Yeah. And then he was like, uh oh. Well, he obviously knew. That and then he turns there. around and he sees it and he's like, he's got like 15 seconds to react to something. Well, he loads his gun. He has time to load his gun because he knows the mom is going to see him and charge him. Well, yeah. I mean, no, his gun was already loaded, wasn't it? I don't think so. I think he loads it. Okay. So he, has yeah, like, he shoots it with the musket, and then he shoots it with his pistol he has, and then he kills it with a knife when the bear's on top of him. Yes. And then the bear lays on top of him. Yeah. Smushing him. And then everybody gets there. Yeah. But goodness gracious. That's that pretty crazy. The bear breaks his leg. Uh, breaks his leg, like, around his ankle. Yeah, he, like, it just, like, bites his leg. There's bite marks and claw marks all over his arm. He's just... He's, like, his flesh is just open. Like, so many points yeah. where his flesh is just, like, exposed. Yeah. Claw his marks all over it's his neck is sliced. He tries to drink water later, oh, and it just like pours out of his neck. And yeah. I was like, Ugh! and then he burns. Oh, then he burns his neck with black powder. Yeah. to like cauterize the wound. Oh my gosh! I'm like, that's a smart idea. Well, that hurt. That'd that's be so idea. painful. And he passes out. Which, yeah. for good reason. Oh, when that oh, scene gosh. happened, I was immediately reminded of Castaway with Tom Hanks. Yeah, when he takes the tooth out. Yeah, with, with the ice like, this is a modern day Castaway. Oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, so. He gets attacked by the bear, and then they put him in a stretcher, and they carry him for, like, a day or two. Yeah. And then they had to go up this mountain, because they're trying to get back. He's the person that knows where everything is in the wilderness, so he's the, the lead to their platoon. Because mm-hmm. they're in a platoon. They're hunting for furs. Um, but they're in Indian territory. Indian territory. Mm-hmm. You remember what the Indians were called? Were, were the Pawnee. Pawnee? No? He was a Pawnee. I think they were well, sweet. I think it was the Pawnee area, and then it got, like... Taken over by another tribe. Oh. Because remember that one guy he met along the way was Pawnee. And he was yes. like, they had, they had murdered his village. And they and Tom Hardy and the, the kid walked through that Pawnee village, remember? Which is yes. where he meets, the, the, the guy left from that Pawnee village, I'm assuming, the guy he meets, the buffalo thing. I'm guessing he's from that village that Tom Hardy saw. And that's, that's what I assumed when I watched the movie. I don't know. I mean, we, it's, not, it's not really clear, but. Anyway. So they eventually leave him because he's too much to carry. Yeah. Uh, Tom Hardy's character, Fitzgerald, stays with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Leo's son and another boy that's friends with Leo. And then eventually Tom Hardy tries to kill Leo. Um, because he's, he's, he's like bedridden. Like the, the moral crisis is Tom Hardy wants to be alive. Because he, the Indians are after him. Because the Indians because are after him. Are They're after not him. like immediately in their vicinity. They're like a day away or two. But two he two like, two. they've waited a couple days for... Leo to get better. He's not gotten any better. As that's perceivable, like you can't. He doesn't look any better. Yeah. So Tom Hardy's like, we just got to kill him. Like, I'm out of here <laughs> because we're gonna die from these Indians who are chasing us. Right. And so he like tries to choke him out. He tries to yeah. choke him out. Um. Oh my gosh. This scene. Tom Hardy asks Leo if he wants to kill him so his son can survive and this other boy can survive. Yeah. And Tom Hardy says, blink. blink once if you want me to strangle you and end your life as fast as I can. Yeah. And it's one blink, so obviously Leo's doesn't bl- like doesn't blink at all for like yeah. thirty seconds, which is a all continuous shot. Yeah, I'm like this is all. You think he? Yeah, because then he blinks. He has to blink. He right. closes his eyes. He doesn't blink. He closes his eyes. Yeah, because it's not a long blink. He closes <laughs> his eyes, and then Tom Hardy, being the jerk that he is, is like, "Oh, well, I guess I'm into blinks. So I'm gonna kill him." Right. And then I mean, he Leo's, asks him a question that he can only answer as he is. Yeah, and then Leo Leo's son comes up and tries to stop him, and then Tom Hardy kills Leo's son, who is a Native American. Um, and they've had conflict before. Leo sees it, obviously. The boy comes back, like, half a day later, after Tom Hardy's character has moved the boy away. They leave the next morning. Mm-hmm. They put Leo in a grave that Tom Hardy has already dug. Yes. To cover him with dirt. Because he was going to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yes. Which was part of the agreement with the captains that he would yeah. b- bury him if he died. Mm-hmm. Not saying that he would kill him. That was not the agreement. But to bury, give him a proper burial is, I think, the terminology right. they used. So then Tom Hardy and the kids leave. Leo somehow crawls out of his grave to his son, confirms that he's dead, stays with him for, like, the night. And, like, Leo has to crawl, because one, he has claws and stuff all over his back, like, just marks and leaking blood everywhere. His left leg, or right leg, is completely broken. Like, his ankle is, like, dangling off of his leg, right? Yeah, essentially. It's still connected. It's still connected, skin, but, it's, like, it's, just but like, it's like completely useless. Yeah. It's just like dangling. It's not connected. It's not splinted either. I don't yeah. think it ever gets splinted. I think this. Um, so there's three st- 
stories happening. There's Leo's story, there's Tom Hardy's story, and there's the, the captain's patrolman story. Yeah, like his little outpost. Yes. So the captain is trying to get back to a fort, a United States Army fort, a mm-hmm. frontiersman fort. Yeah. Tom Hardy's trying to get back to there so he can get paid. And then Leo's trying to get back to kill Tom Hardy. Because he killed his son. Because he killed his son. Which was so emotional. Like, when he, like Leo's reaction, he's, he's on his deathbed, essentially. And he can barely re- barely move, but he looks. And the look in his eyes was just like pure rage. It was. He was just like, Woo! like he couldn't even talk either. So he was just yeah. like venting, and yeah, he couldn't like, talk. He was so mad. I mean, for good reason. I thought he was gonna die so many times though in the movie. Leo. Yeah. I mean, I think he should have died. So many Event. Times, oh, but. I mean, essentially, Leo just crawls. Yeah. Like he just crawls through the wilderness, like on his belly, crawling for like days. Yeah. And then eventually, eventually he gets like a crutch. He makes like a crutch out of a branch. I don't know. But somehow like, eventually like a big walking stick. His, uh, his foot gets healed. Yeah, like by the end of the movie he can use his foot fine. He can run and walk and everything. Which I thought was kind of bullcrap. Uh, I assume that he just made a splint off, off screen. Yeah. If he made a crutch he could probably make a splint. I mean I would assume so. But an awesome part he had this fur with him yeah. which was the bear skin. Yeah. That bear skin of the bear that attacked him. They right. skinned it and he used that for a coat for the rest of the movie, which was awesome. Wait, who skinned it and gave it to him? I don't know. I can't. But I thought, wasn't it Tom Hardy? I don't think so. I don't think anybody did. Unless they said it. I don't remember him. If Tom Hardy said it, probably, because I don't understand anything he said. I can't remember. But, um, and then eventually Leo goes, um, there's a final fight scene. Oh my gosh. Tom Hardy and Leo. Leo. And that was epic. And it was so brutal. It was. It was like a real fight. Like, so many things... I've seen recently just like choreographed and you can tell like this one looked like it wasn't choreographed even though it probably was but it was like the most brutal fight like it's just two guys trying to kill each other they're not like particularly really like crazy good fighters but it's just like rage from Leo's side and then uh, Tom is like obviously trying to live trying to survive but he wasn't he shot by that point once <sighs> Tom got, yeah didn't he get shot in the shoulder at one point probably I think I shot in the arm um, I had to make it even. Tom Hardy or uh, Leo was attacked by a black bear. Wow. Um, there were Leo has a, a revolver with him, or I don't even think it's a. Re- I think it's a. It's a pistol. I think it's a muscle loader pistol. But two times in the movie, it has fired twice without him reloading. Yeah, what without showing on? any reload. What's going on? Yeah. One t- one time is literally like five seconds after it fires the first time. Yeah, and I was like, that's not chased how... by the horse. Yeah, oh, he's on horses and he yeah. fires twice. Like, I did not see him reload, and it's really difficult to reload one of those things. Wow, movie. And then he eventually rides a horse off a cliff and survives that. And <laughs> again, so my favorite word to describe this movie is just straight brutal, 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 brutal. It is crazy. Wait, brutal? It's brutal. Oh. Um, he so the horse falls off the cliff. Yep. Freaking. Does a Luke Skywalker, Han Empire Solo, Strikes Empire Strikes Back, slice the Tauntaun in half, except for this is like way more. It's a horse. Because it, it's a horse, and you see him take out all of its guts yeah. and organs, and then you see him get naked and get in there. And he so like, he can be warm through the night. Yeah. He essentially sleeps in a horse carcass yep. to stay warm. And he's covered in blood for like the rest of the movie because of it. Oh, he, I'm sure he smells so bad. And apparently that was like semi-real. What? Yeah. What that mean? Also... Uh, what does that mean? I don't know. The article I read said he actually did sleep in a horse carcass. Ooh. Also, there's a scene where he eats uh, oh, buffalo it's raw. Bison. I think it's bison. Yeah. Well, I mean, isn't bison buffalo? Technically, bison is the official term for it. Buffalo oh. is like a... Layman's term? Like a slang term. Okay. Um, there's a scene where he eats raw bison. Because he meets this guy. Because he meets this Indian And the dude. guy... It's like... They're both mouth. alone. So Leo's like, well, I'm too hungry, I haven't eaten in 24 days, and my foot's broken, and I have scars, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the Indian's like, I take pity on you. And he throws him, like, an <laughs> organ. Like, and he eats, like, Leo eats it, and, and immediately he up. immediately throws up, and then he finishes it off. Yeah. And apparently that was real. That was a real bison organ. Mm, gross. So again, super brutal movie. Gross. Also, crazy side story, uh, there's a, a big battle scene. Uh, in the beginning of the movie, oh, and yeah. apparently an actor for like legitimately was drugged naked across the icy like area, and a bunch of actors were like submerged in the icy cold water of the river for like an extended period of time. Mm. So some crazy stuff happened. 
uh, some descriptions I've read online of from the cast of the movies that it was just like a hell. Um, the movie was hell. Like that's what they called it. Like it was so bad. It was such a hard thing to do. Probably. Apparently, this movie script has actually been like floating around for a while. This idea, really? but no actor like they couldn't find a lead actor who was willing to do everything Leo. until now. Until Leo stepped up and did it. I'll take an Oscar. And Tom Hardy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> And so that, I mean, it was just crazy. Crazy movie. Uh, overall, I would recommend it to anybody who enjoys, um, um, if like, you're old enough. if you're old enough, uh, I would say you need, to, like, this is rated R and should For a be. For reason. I mean, it, this is like, the gore is all, I'd say, realistic gore, but it's like, gross. It's like, cringe word. Like, I cringe. Hugh Glass. Hugh Glass, there it is. Um, I legitimately cringed multiple times in this movie. Yeah. Um, cause it, it was just like too much. Oh my gosh. So, uh, I recommend this movie to anybody who likes, uh, like, can we, brutal movies? Can we talk about it for a second about all the freaking awesome movies Leonardo DiCaprio's been? The Revenant, Wolf of Wall Street, The Great Gatsby, Django Unchained, Jago, J. Edgar, which is the, I've actually not seen movie. that. Inception? Yep. Uh, there's a video short for Inception, I know that. Shutter Island, mm -hmm. uh, Blood Diamond, The Departed, Aviator, Catch Me If You Can. Uh, Gangs of New York. Yep. Titanic. Romeo Titanic, obviously. Romeo and Juliet. He was famous for that one. It's just... The no. Quick and the Dead? What's Eating Gilbert Grape? Like, Growing Pains, obviously? Right. No, I mean, he's... I've, I've referenced him as an amazing actor before. I know. I'm because just... he is such a great actor. But when you look at him, when you just look at him all in a row... You don't really... Like, I know. I like, do blockbuster, this? blockbuster, blockbuster. Nominated for six Oscars. Yeah. He hasn't won a single one. Um, I'm gonna go Tom Hanks right now. Do you want me to continue talking about I'll my... I'd love for you to continue. Okay. This happens all the time. Uh, what are you talking about? You uh, always ask me to, like... Like, at least you look something up while I'm talking. Either way... We're uh, making a Lewis and Clark TV show. Yep. You, know, you knew that? Uh, I've heard of this. I have not seen it. Seen anything about it. Um, also, I mean, there's, like, a lot of Lewis and Clark stuff. There, a book was written recently. But you probably don't care about history books. But I do a little bit, because that's what I teach. Uh, either way, I would recommend this movie to anybody who is an adult and who likes it's, suspenseful... It's a drama. It's yeah. not an action movie. I would say it's suspenseful, though. Like, there are times where I'm like, how is she going to get, like, anxiety? Like, oh my gosh, she's yeah. going to live. Um, definitely drama. Uh, I don't know if I'll ever buy this movie to own it. I think this is one you just you'll watch once. Maybe twice, and you, it'll be it. Ooh. But not not a known movie, but it's a good movie. One I think you should see if you like westerns specifically. Modern, uh, like the, the modern take on westerns. This is it. You think? Yeah, like most. I wouldn't modern, say that at all. Really? When I think western, I think cowboy. Well, I, I well, think this John is like frontiers cowboy. Cowboy. This is like a front. Well, that's, but that's not a John Wayne's not modern. When I western. think of western, I think of like southwest United States. Okay. This is like northwest. This is like Northwest. Uh, I still consider it a Western. Like, I think the modern day look at Western movies is really gritty, really gory. What's another one? Uh, what was it? Road to Yuma. 310 to Yuma? 310 to Yuma. That's a, with Russell Crowe. Yeah, that's definitely a Western. And it's a, super gritty and gory. That's more like a John Wayne film than this. This is not, this is like I a, mean, the setting is a little bit different, but it's still the same idea of like, Man versus... It's kind of like man versus nature, but when, also man versus man. When I hear Western, I think cowboy. There was no cowboys in this. Okay. But I don't know what else you call this. I mean, it's it's like Frontiersman. Frontier. Which... It's not... It almost takes... I kind of consider cowboys... I guess I'm equating cowboys and Frontiersmen as kind of like similar people. Which, they're not the same. But they are both on the frontier, like in the crazy parts of America. In the wild parts. In the wild west. Ooh. Because it's wild. wild. It is quite wild in this movie, I would say. Wild, wild west. Wild, wild west. Will Smith. <laughs> wild west. Oh, have you seen the Suicide Squad trailer? Uh, I actually have. What do you think? I'm excited. A lot of people think, uh, what's her name? Harley Quinn is too <laughs> sexualized. Did I talk to you about that? Um, I, you've not talked to me about this. I talked to somebody else. Um, I looked at the trailer after I read this article, and she's mm -hmm. wearing a baseball t-shirt. Yeah. A baseball tee. So, like, a t-shirt with long sleeves and really short sh shorts with leggings. Yeah. And people are like, they're just making her sexual, and they take away all of her character. I'm like, what? Isn't that part of her character, though? 
Um, like she's a little bit wild. Does isn't she like dating ever, the Joker all the time? Yeah, she's always been dating the Joker. But ever since the Arkham series games, yeah, that's when she like her sex really like went through the roof. Oh really? However, people have always been making like, making like fan art about her about how sexy she is. Yeah, obviously that happens all the time. Yeah, but before that, she was never. She would wear like a like a Harlequin suit. Mm-hmm. So like a skirt with long leggings and like a jester type thing. Yeah. Um. So not super sexualized. Yeah. Um. And originally her story, her her origin story, first of all, yeah, came from the Batman animated series. Not from comic books or anything. Really? Yeah. I guess I I do remember seeing her as like the jester character. Yeah. Like red and white yeah. and black. And I mean, are you really surprised that Hollywood is going to sexualize her? No, I don't. <laughs> care. I don't care because I don't think she's that sexualized. But her original origin story is that the Joker conned her into like falling in love with her, falling mm-hmm. in love with him because she was a uh, psychiatrist who was trying to figure out why Joker was so crazy. Hmm. Joker romanced her, and now she's crazy because Joker does whatever he wants. Um, in this trailer, people have argued that it looks like she falls into, like, a vat of chemicals. Yeah. Like, a vat of chemicals. Um, and then that's how, like, her skin gets sad and everything, that's why she's crazy. Yeah. As opposed to, like, just falling in love with the Joker. So they, um, people are like, they're taking all the feminism out of it because she was supposed to be a strong woman and do whatever she wants, and now she just fell in and got superpowers, blah, blah, blah. And she's too sexualized. I'm like, she's wearing shorts. That's it. It's Margot Robbie who is plays her. Nope. Well, I mean, I I don't know how to respond to it other than it's Hollywood and they do what sells. Not saying it's right or wrong, oh. but she was in the Wolf of Wall Street. Margot Robbie, yeah. Leo DiCaprio's wife. Uh, I actually have not seen all of that movie. Really? Because my roommates in college were watching it, and I watched a part of it, and I was like, I'm not really interested in this, and I went to bed. What part of it? It was pretty late. I don't remember. There's, there's like crazy amounts of partying going on at the time. That's the movie. I mean, that's like the whole movie, from what I understand. Yeah. There's a scene where Leo does like ecstasy or whatever. Yeah. And he has to go home for some reason. Oh, I think I did see that. And part. he crawls to his Lamborghini. But you think like, he makes it. You think he fine. makes it, and then it flashes back, and he crawls to his Lamborghini and like opens it with his foot and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, well, the Revenant. <laughs> <laughs> It was a preview. That's just the remnant. He just is that, was that his like, uh, his what was it? His, his tryout. Out. He just like his sent audition. the He's clip like, of him like trying to crawl in ecstasy. Ecstasy. That's funny. Yep. Anyway, I think that's all the random stuff I can distract you with for right now. Okay. Well, uh, I don't have anything else. Do you have anything else? Nope. All right. Well, uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, as per normal. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can tweet at us at UP Gamers Podcast. Uh, you can send us Word. an email, a virtual letter, if you will, uh, at underpaidgamerspodcast at gmail.com. Yep. We also have a brand spanking new WordPress site, so you can leave comments there. Uh, it's called underpaidgamers.wordpress.com. Um, there's some there's, well, there's one blog post on there right now that I wrote. Ooh. And there may be more in the future. Uh, so if you want to read those and comment, that's awesome. There's also links there to uh, our Twitter page. And essentially, the website's going to be the place you can go to see everything that we have all linked into one spot. So uh, there's that. We're on SoundCloud. We are. We're on iTunes. We're on iTunes. Free downloads on both. Yep. We're for free. And, yeah, Stitcher, IGN forums, stuff like that. So just Google Underpaid Gamers Podcast and you'll find us. Yep. First of all, no, that's it. And we would love for you to share us with your friends. And your family. Comment, and like. And your enemies. Repost. Make amends with your biggest enemy. By giving the gift of us. There you go. Be yes. Like, I know you like to beat up people. Have you heard of this Revenant review? It's yeah. very violent. Oh my just gosh. like you. Oh. Here you go. Uh, have you ever thought, man, Valentine's Day is coming up soon. What's the best gift to give on Valentine's Day? Well, the obvious answer is an episode. We're doing a special episode. We are. Yes, yes, we are. I told you about it. Yep, you definitely did. Best games to play cooperatively. Oh my is goodness! Valentine's Day special. So you guys should use us. Look, look. There's two good things about it. First off, you get our awesome voices and okay. our witty humor. But you also, oh, well, like, let's be honest, guys, we're free. It's me. You don't have to pay for us. It it's a free Valentine's Day. Free date. date. It's a free date idea from us to you. Our gift. 
We love your you back from the You can re-gift us if you like. You can re-gift us. Don't we would love to be re-gifted. We actually like it. We prefer it that way. Yes. That's all we got. So see you guys later. Adios, muchachos.